Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. My name is Deepa. I'm Deepa Ramraj. I'm an Access Certified Facilitator for several workshops of Access, Access Mars, Access Facelift for three and a half day foundation. It used to be the four day foundation earlier. Being you adventurers, talk to the entities and wealth creation workshops and more. Okay, so let's talk today about tools to create ease. We had a call some three weeks ago to talk about this and many of you did talk about what tools you are using for, you know, to create greater ease. Any of you would like to talk about what tools are you using now today? What tools are you using to create greater ease? Interesting point of view. Awesome. I love that tool. It's such a powerful tool. Amazing tool. So <clears throat> interesting point of view. How many of you remember that? Raise your hands or type on the chat window. Great, Harish, naturally. Who else? Who else remembers that tool? Interesting point of view. So when you are entangled with something and you're really upset, angry, about something, interesting point of view is an amazing, amazing tool to use. Keep saying 10, 20, 50 times, depending on how agitated you are. The more agitated you are, the more number of times does help. Interesting point of view, they have this point of view. Interesting point of view, they have this point of view. Interesting point of view, they have this point of view. Keep repeating that 10, 20, 30, 40 times until you start loosening up the energies with that situation or with that person. And then interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Say that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times so that you loosen up that energy. You'd be surprised that a, a lot of the things we are dealing with from yesteryears are because we are very entangled with those situations. Sometimes it is related to the health of our you know, near and dear ones, sometimes it is because we would like to have more friends, we would like to have more people who are nurturing and contributive to us. And we have sometimes expectations of them. And they don't match those expectations. So there are many, many, many reasons for why we get upset or angry with people or with situations or even with ourselves. Have you ever found you angry with you? Anybody? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> sometimes you see that, hey, it's possible for you to create here. And that, that, that something is possible and it does not get created that way. So you could actually get angry with you too. Interesting point of view gets you to disentangle from all these situations. It gets you to let go in a whole different, different way. And that is what will create greater for you. Because as you disentangle from these energies that are pulling you down, that are engulfing you sometimes, which are not nurturing to you, as you let go of the entanglement with that, it's easier for you to go forward. Otherwise, we are often like a dog on a leash. So that old situation, because we have not let go of it, that old situation will keep pulling us backward rather than allow us to move forward. Okay, so the more you <clears throat> let go of what is holding you captive, actually that will start moving you forward. And that's an amazing, amazing tool, interesting point of view. You may not let go in a single day. You may not loosen up the energies in a single day because we are really entangled sometimes with many energies. And as you practice this, you will find you're no more like being pulled by a leash backward into the past. And you can actually move with greater ease to the future that you would like to create. What else is possible to create greater ease and joy? What else would you like to, to use? What other tools do you all use? Anybody else use any other tool? 
light and heavy. Light and heavy. Okay, cool, cool. Does anybody remember that tool? Anybody of you has practiced that tool? Light and heavy? No, everybody's forgotten all the tools. Tools are for somebody else, not for me. I, I don't use the tools. I'll still be with my trauma and drama. I will still be with uh, what was not working for me. So actually, we put a lot of energy to refuse change. How much energy are you using to refuse the change that you could be choosing? Which could actually create greater for you. You will be surprised when you look at that. You, Each one of us is spending a lot of energy to refuse change with ease. We are using a lot of energy to keep us in the same place. Because that may be our comfort zone. To not allow change. But we fail. Yeah, yeah, I want to change some things in my life. I want to change something for my parents. I want to change something for my family members, for my children, whatever. But are you first willing to re receive change? Are you first willing to allow change? And how much energy are you using to refuse the change that you could be choosing. A lot of people are afraid of change. They're not sure what that change would look like, be like. What if you're so infinite, so amazingly powerful that change is possible and actually it could catapult you to a whole different way of creating your life. Light and heavy. So sometimes we use logic to plan out what is creating greater for us. Okay, so if I spend this money, then this is what will take place and therefore I will do this and then I'm willing to spend the money. That's logic. Okay, so right now I don't have so much of money so I can't go on this holiday to Goa or whichever place and therefore I will not go on a holiday. That's logic again, okay? I have only so much of time so I cannot do blah, blah, blah. So I have to rule that out of my life. I cannot choose this in my life. All this is logic. This is the way we frequently create our life and living. Through lack of choices, as, through the assumptions that only some things are possible. And that is called a presumptive reality where you already assume, oh, okay, only this is possible and that is not possible. And these conclusions, these definitions of our life and living, this, these are our, these are our comfort zones that we hate to let go of. We think they are the definition of us. Some people say, I'm the kind of person who is this. Really? And you cannot change. That means that is where you have boxed you to say, you are this kind of person and you cannot change. What if you're an infinite being with no definitions? What if your definitions of you are actually pulling you down? So what is this tool, light and heavy? What does it help you for? What contribution could that be to you? So when you'd like to go for a holiday, let's say to Goa or whichever place, ask, okay, if I go on a holiday, is it light for me or heavy for me? If it is light, go ahead, choose it and ask. Ask Goa to create the money for you. Ask your body to create the money for you. Give others a job too. What if you don't have to be the only one working hard for that holiday? If you find something heavy for you, look at ways to let go that. You may have a conclusion. Oh my God, if I want to go on a holiday, who will take care of my dog? Who will take care of this person? My parents, that other person. I have the responsibility. I cannot take leave from my work. I have this business to attend to. Whatever that is for you. Again, those are the presumptive realities that are pulling us down. So look at, okay, what what are my definitions of why I can't go on a holiday? If you remove all of that, then what else is possible? Don't look at money. What if money is not a consideration at all? If money was not the consideration, would you choose this trip? If money was not the consideration, would you choose these clothes? If money was not the consideration, would you choose this job? Would that job be fun for you? Whatever you're considering, you're playing with. 
a new business, for example. Is that fun for you? And if it's fun for you, what if money could follow too? Because if it's not fun for you and you're just doing it for the money, it may not work out for a very long time. It could work out in the short time, but you you may be creating from effort on that job. You may be creating from effort in that business without the ease and the joy. And ease and joy is something we were never taught to include in our lives. We were always taught to exclude it in our from our lives. So start asking, if I were to include ease and joy in my life, then what else is possible? I request both of, more of you to open up your videos, please, because it's fun to watch you. So, <clears throat> choose what is light for you and lightness would get created. If you choose what is heavy for you, you may be a little held up in the heaviness and try to bring lightness to the heavy situation, which is what we are addict, addicted to. Most of us are doing that in our life, where we are addicted to something, let us say, a certain amount of heaviness, if it gets light, you're like, what's happening? It's too light. Oh, this person usually shouts at me and they haven't shouted. So go look for that again. Oh, usually I have this ache and pain and now that's my comfort zone. I don't have the ache and pain. What's going on? What did I do right? And immediately next day they have the ache and pain and they say, yeah, yeah, now I'm very comfortable because I have the same ache and pain. This is my life. I can't have it changed. And some people have a job that is not paying them regularly, but they still choose that because they love that pain. They will say, no, 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 I don't love, I, like, I don't like that pain, Deepa, I like to change it. Yes, if you keep choosing that and that situation hasn't changed, guess what? That's maybe a comfort zone for you. That's what you love. You don't want to change it. Okay, so what is your comfort zone? What is it you like and don't like to change? Uh, I don't like to go that far. It's like one hour away. I don't want to visit anybody. Let them come and see me or I'm not going out anywhere. Is that a comfort zone for you that you're creating now? And comfort zones change periodically. I had a, you know, a family member come over and stay with us a few years ago. A young little seven-year-old boy and he was like, what? Chapatis? I can't eat chapatis. No, you know, I can't bite. I said, open your mouth and he had lots of teeth. So his comfort zone that was created for him at home was he can't chew chapatis. So he has to, it has to be put into hot milk so that it will soak and then he can put it in his mouth and chew. I said, guess what? My children, that means his cousins. I said, your brother and sister, they're all going to eat this food. Would you like to eat it too? And he said, okay, I will do that. And it started changing his reality. That was his comfort zone. And that was also something that his parents had created for him, thinking it's difficult for him to bite. Or his grandparents, whatever, whoever. So... Sometimes our so-called comfort zones have been created by other family members for us and we have chosen it blindly. So I remember, I think Dane said that in his family, it was not allowed to have too much money. They said, at least, you know, we, yeah, you know, it's better not to have too much money because if we have too much money, we will become sad. So let's not have too much money. And Dane saw that they were not really particularly happy set of family members anyways. So after some period of this, he said, hey, can we just at least have the money? I know we are, we are also not happy people. At least let the money show up. Okay. So that was a reason and justification in that family that it's okay to be poor. Being poor is more important than being with money. What validation is that? What if money is not a consideration, if food is not a consideration, if clothes are not a consideration, if your job is not a, your, not a consideration, if business is not a consideration, what if you could just be happy for today? 
are you willing to choose and include ease and joy in your life? So we spoke about some tools to create ease and joy, but fundamentally, ask yourself, are you willing to include ease and joy in your life? And many of you may say, yes, yes, I like to have more ease and joy. So where is it? So what are the fun things you guys are choosing? In the past two days, anything, anybody chose some fun things to do? Go ahead, talk about it. What is fun for you? <clears throat> Shala? Yes, please. Usually for me, uh, now the semester is going on. What is like my semester? Of the, uh, semester, yeah. So usually we are come to the end of semester. And uh, from June 16, the exams will be starting. Usually in my this uh, this many years of service, I used to be very, very an anxious and I just have to finish the syllabus. I can't take leave. I can't let go of students. I can't let them go to any of the uh, other uh, subjects. I used to be very, very, very strict with them. Of late, I mean, even they, uh, kids, they started asking, ma'am, you have done enough syllabus as per syllabus or out of syllabus or whatever. You have tortured us enough. Please let us take two days break. They themselves asked. And I sat and realized for 10 minutes, I just sat like that. And I thought, okay, two days is not a big deal. Let me take a break. They are asking for not uh, too much. Two days is okay. I took a break. I don't know whether they got the uh, calmness or not. I got it. Wow. I realized that it is not the end of the semester or beginning of the semester or wherever. If you really want to take a break from whatever the chaos, you can really take it. You don't have to think about it a lot. I took it. Today is the second day and I really felt very light. So Otherwise, cool. I would be running, screaming everywhere. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. <laughs> and actually, what you did just now is a powerful tool. So one is to express the places you are choosing ease and joy. We can express it at least to yourself. Even if you're not expressing it to a group like this, you actually build that muscle to be willing to choose ease and joy more frequently. How many of you don't even remember when you last laughed? Like, can't last two days, ease and joy? No, no, nothing, nothing. I can't think of anything. What if you could change that in your life? Okay, anybody else wants to uh, talk about what joyful activity they involved themselves in in the past couple of days? No, no one is having ease and joy. Gosh, come on, come on. Shilpa, Harish, Sanita. What did you create that was ease and joy? Nanda. I was just reading a book. It was raining, reading a book. I think that's joy enough sometimes. Nice. Actually, uh, my friends are planning a holiday on June 10th and 11th, but I am blocked on for some session but I just let it go and I said no I'm missing too many of these holidays with my friends let me just take a break and I told them okay I'm coming whatever it is and I cancelled this session so I'm looking forward to it maybe that gave me a lot of happiness also wonderful amazing a choice <laughs> for future possibilities awesome thank you for sharing yes go ahead Sarita actually today itself in the afternoon we, myself and my other two colleagues, female colleagues, usually I wouldn't anything and everything. I, I wouldn't mind. Even it's uh, all whites, dairy, sugar, salt, everything. I just don't care. I eat everything. So those two females, they're not eating sugar, salt, all whites. They would they were under strict diet. Today, all of a sudden, I don't know what they realized. All of a sudden, they uh, organized a pizza event tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, out of the blue, they are asking that we'll go and eat pizza and have coke and we'll have everything, uh, junk food, that this and all. Then I tell, okay. So what if we didn't have to label food as junk or not junk, right? These <laughs> yeah. definitions are also something that pull us down. Yeah. And what if it's okay yeah. to have anything any day? You're not having yeah. it every day. So what if it's all right? 
Awesome. Usually I would invite them, but they wouldn't come. So I would go alone and I would eat. For me, eating is the one thing where I don't have to bother about anybody whether coming or not. I'll just go and enjoy myself. <laughs> Even if it's one full tray of pizza, one tray of uh, uh, dilkush, I'll just eat alone. And I'll happily come back. But these people are not joining me. I don't know what uh, realization they got. They suddenly just, yeah, it's okay. We can walk and we can uh, cut it down. But still, we have to eat all those things. Wonderful. I felt very happy. Awesome. How does it get better than that? Yeah. Teja Suni has message to say she watched an old favorite movie yesterday. So that was the way that she was choosing fun. Awesome. Cool. So what if you could include fun? Every day ask, what is it that I can include in my life that could be fun for me? Every day, what if you could allow fun into your lives? You know, many years ago, before Access, um, I was watching a comedy and the whole family was watching. And I noticed everybody else was just rolling and laughing at the comedy. I noticed I just couldn't laugh. I couldn't laugh at all. It's like, gosh, I have to be willing to change this area of my life. When did I become so serious that I can't laugh? And um, so there are days when I play some stand-up comedy YouTube videos and uh, if that is not fun for me then I move to another guy with a different stand-up uh, humor and uh, com it's I just look at how to have fun and then there was this um, I think it's a comedy series from a few years ago and I sat and watched it and I hadn't watched those episodes I was just laughing my heart out even when I was sitting alone it was not like I was having fun only when other people were with me. I was like, wow, this is cool. I'm willing to have more fun now than before. This is awesome. And um, there was one, let me see, a few years ago, Dane and Gary had both come that year to India. And um, I had get, got some books. Um, you know, uh, Gary is the founder of Access Consciousness and Dane is the co-creator. And um, either they'd both come to India or I'd met them somewhere abroad, whichever. And that year I had put a book signed by Gary and a book signed by Dane, like an autograph. And there was one particular, yes, this particular day, both of them, actually, I got them, but they were both present and I got a book signed by both of them. And I read it in the evening. What had they written? And they always, you know, check the energy and go with whatever was required for that moment. And they had written, both of them had written I think one had written, choose fun, and the other one had said something about including fun in life. And I was like, I thought I was including fun. Am I, have I, is there another greater possibility? And I got a yes. I was like, wow. So how much of a fun we're willing to include? Sometimes we do gravitate towards our comfort zones of maybe seriousness for somebody. It may be sadness for somebody else it may be being focused so focused so focused on work that they forget to relax for somebody it might be taking care of other people or so see what are your comfort zones and for some people the comfort zone is being a victim okay so see if that is also there for you if so look at how you can let go that what does that mean like, oh my God, you know, I I would have had a happy life if this had not happened for me, if that person had not said to me this to me, if this person had not done that to me or whatever. That is where we are playing a victim. If I had more reportees, then that would have happened. If I was receiving more money, then I would have been happier. Those are, those are our reasons and justifications for not choosing happiness. And those are also sometimes the places where we are playing a victim. So what places are you choosing to be a victim? What if you could give up some of those today? You don't have to share this, but all of you, just think of three situations where you feel you're a victim. You can discuss it. Sure, you're welcome to discuss. So. Think of something from your childhood where you feel you're a victim. Somebody didn't treat you well. They could have treated you better, whatever. So get that energy, okay? Now look at the next one. 
some friends couldn't communicate with you or cousins the way you would have liked them to. Okay. Maybe that's another place you're playing victim. Okay. Now look at things later on in life with closer family members where like if this hadn't that happened, that hadn't happened. If I'd got a job promotion, then I would have been happier or whatever else it is more recent for you. So whatever that is, are you just willing to give that up now? What if we didn't have to pull our energies down by playing victim, by feeling sad, by being serious or anything? What if you don't have to choose these as your comfort zones anymore? So what else is your comfort zone? Some people say, I'm so focused, I can't take a holiday. This is how, at least I justify that I'm doing, working hard for this exam. This is how I justify that I'm working hard for business. I will not take a single day off. If you take a day off, maybe you'll get more ideas to contribute to your business. Even if you didn't have to spend to go somewhere on a holiday, what if you could just clear up, declutter your head? Declutter your head to create greater. Declutter your thoughts so that you can allow fresh creative ideas to show up for you. Fun to show up for you. What if that is possible? What if that could be allowed to? So let me introduce some of you who are new to access and those of you who have been around for some time. So there is a tool called the clearing statement. So it goes something like this, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, poads, and beyonds. So these are the places where we have made something as right or wrong or good or bad. Our whole life we are used to classifying things are as right or wrong, good or bad. If a meeting went well, we'll say, yeah, it was a good meeting. No, it didn't go well. Oh, it kind of, they were interested, but then I didn't get the order. So we are always judging everything based on the outcomes. And that is this reality. I tell people who are pitching for a business contract or something, what if you could have ease and joy in that journey? What if it was not about getting the order? And what if you could get the order too? That doesn't mean you reject it. Yet, what it is about, what if it is about you could, how much fun you can have in that journey? What if you didn't have to judge any situation based on its outcome? I got so much money, so that's a good meeting. No, I didn't get so much money as I thought I should, and therefore it's not a great meeting or whatever. What if you could enjoy each minute as it comes? Even now, wherever you are, even if you're not eating food and you love food, what if you could still just smile and enjoy yourself here? What if it was not from exclusion? Asking questions is an amazing tool, by the way. Okay? So once I want to have it's a long time since I had ice cream and orange juice. For some reason, these two disconnected things I thought about. And then uh, I thought about it and I said, okay, right now I don't have the time to have it. And what if I could receive that with ease? And I forgot about that question. After some time, I'm in the kitchen and my husband is in keeping something in the fridge. And I was like, what's that? He said, orange juice. And I also got some ice cream. I was like, what? Did I tell you about to get that? He said, no, we haven't met all day. I said, yes. And I did message you on this topic. So I'm a bit, how did you know to get this? He said, I don't know. I thought about it. I got it. Okay. So when I asked what would it take to receive this with ease, somewhere he picked up that pot and he brought it for all of us at home. I was like, wow, that is so easy. And what if you could create that kind of thing more often in your life? Ask and you shall receive. And not just food. Okay. This is applicable for so many things in life. So many of you have asked and received. Any of you want to share about how you asked and received something? 
give a non-food example because I just gave a food example. Which who wants to go? Uh, Mamta. Hmm, sure. So, uh, so many times I've asked for gold um, necklaces. And like, I would just ask, I would like to have a, a certain kind of a thing. It would not be an exact prescription, but like a couple of things would be there. For example, once I wanted, I want something which has a, some heart sent it, into it. And a day or two later, like somebody uh, comes and sells like the new one. We never used it, but we want to sell it off. It's time for something else for some other need I have. And my brother would be like, before melting, let me show it to my sister. She might be interested. And he will bring it and then say, okay, if you like it, you can have it. And we're like, yeah, how else does it get? But like, I would have created in, the, in a day or two, not more than that. It would not be like a long thing, mostly two, three days maximum. So I have that uh, no judgment zone of receiving uh, gold, like so open. There was once I created, uh, I would like to have it, but no judgment about it and just left it. That time, hardly 1,000, 2,000 in my account. And I am doing social work, hardly survival. But one conversation was like, I'm not getting it from my parents because they are a little, little upset with my that decision about doing social work. I got it a month, month and a half later from somebody who felt like godfather to me and gifted me for Diwali. Wow. And wow. Yeah. So I, I have awesome a few about receiving in gold. I'm like, happy to receive gold all the time. That is so cool. That is so cool. Awesome. How does it fit better than that? Ask and you shall receive. I also receive teachers. Uh, like I wanted to learn, um, you know, some mandala or whatever. I said, I, I want somebody who's, who's going to make it a little fun and cool to be around. And that that's the person. I don't know who that person is. Whoever it is, I would like to have that. And my friend's friend shared his wife's. Uh, she's just starting out to share, it, so it's very joyous teaching, like just sharing kind of. It's all fun, and I'm creating nice, creative work, which is, you know, uh, creating so much ease for me, a lot of joy for me, and uh, it's coming out really well. Lot of joy in sharing that also. If you want, I can share it. Thank sure, you. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing that. So a lot of people have, you know, each one of you has different capacities. So for some, it's just easy to ask for money and it shows up. For some, ask for jewelry, which is another form of money, ask for it to show up and it does. For some, it is food. For some, it is all of that, all of that and much more. No, it's not so. Ice big. cream? Oh, okay. Yes, we can see that. Somebody is saying something. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm still getting prepared halfway through. Somebody is saying something. Sorry, please come again. Sarita, Sarita. Sarita, go ahead. Yeah. Ice cream. Whenever th we think of ice cream, it shows up. No matter how, no matter where, <laughs> it will definitely show up. <laughs> so cool. So cool. People have received holidays by just asking. Okay. People have received jobs by just asking. Okay. Ask and you shall receive is an amazing, amazing tool to use. People have received clients by just asking. Business revenues, so many of you, right? Yes. So ask and you shall receive. That's an amazing tool. So what are the ways we can ask for it? What would it take for me to choose ease today? That's a great question, by the way, because it's our choice to choose ease. And very often we don't, we are in our comfort zone of trauma and drama and upset and intrigue. So we love that so much. We keep swimming in that and forget to get out of it sometimes. So ask, what would it take for me to choose ease today? And you could just swim through everything with ease. And create greater possibilities. Ask, what greater possibilities could I create today? And when you say greater possibilities, what shows up is when you don't have a definition of something, we're just saying greater. We're not saying it should be better, give me more money or whatever. So when we don't have a definition to it, so much is possible.
and ask whom can I call up today and talk about this. So sometimes if you feel you're stuck, for example, ask whom can I speak to today? Who could be a contribution to this today? Ask that question. And a single phone call or a message to someone, even if they are busy, might be a contribution. Maybe going for a walk could be a contribution and it could clear up some thoughts for you. Ask, what is it that I can add to my life today to create greater? When you're willing to ask, greater possibilities could show up. Don't ask the question, why? Why is an invitation to the same issues again and again? Another tool is, how did I get so lucky? So think about a time when you got money with ease, whatever, something with great ease, and ask, how did I get so lucky? And when you think of that and ask that, that's greater energies of that could appear again for you. How did I get so lucky? How did I get so lucky? How did I get so lucky? Think of something that is pleasant for you. Happy times for you. Ask, how did I get so lucky? Then you're being the invitation for that again in your life. Why does this happen to me is not a great question to ask. So don't ask that. So with the word how, we don't ask many questions. We only say, how does it get better than this? So ask that question where when something not so great is going on in your life, ask, how does it get better than this? And when something great is going on in your life, again, ask, how does it get better than this? Because then you can allow it to get better. The universe wants to contribute to each one of us. And when you ask, how does it get better than this? The universe is actually contributing greater energies of that again. How does it get better than this? How did I get so lucky is an amazing, amazing tool. Hi, Auntie, can I share? Yes. Hi. Um, so this was uh, in 2020 and I was working on a project and I worked with least developed countries and uh, there was a conference that was supposed to happen. Um, and when I was working on it, I was just thinking about, I wish I could get, um, get to go to this conference, uh, which is like an annual conference of the United Nations. Uh, 2021, many of the least developed countries didn't get vaccines, so it got moved to 2022. Uh, 2022, it was a very small um, small gathering because New York had a lot of eruption of uh, this thing. I forgot about it and moved back to India and I was like, okay, this is not happening. Maybe, you know, luck, I, I don't have the luck. Uh, this conference got moved to March 2023 and I completely forgot about it. I didn't even work on this particular subject for close to almost two years now. And I get a call in February from my professor who I had previously worked with and she's like, are you available in March to come to Qatar? I was like, why? She's like, this conference is happening and we want you to come. Uh, are you available next month? I was like, yeah. So she's like, and we just have two passes left and somebody actually uh, dropped and we really want you to come this time. I was like, okay. And within, uh, within like three weeks, I got an invitation from the UN to be a part of this conference in Doha. And I flew and I came back. Um, I basically met people from, I mean, I am, I'm crazy. I'm obsessed with the United Nations. So I had an opportunity to meet people from different parts of the world. And this particular conference was something that I had, you can call it manifested like three years before uh, going this time. Awesome. So I, how did I get so lucky it was, was, was the part there. So cool. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. That's such a great possibility. So what she asked for, actualized for her in about three years. And that is true. You know, some things you ask for may not actualize immediately. But if you don't have the attachment to that outcome, then you could allow it with greater ease and joy. But congratulations for that, Tejasi. So okay. Bob, that is so cool. So 
what possibilities are each of you refusing that you truly could be choosing? What if we are all refusing certain possibilities that are available to us? So what possibilities are you refusing that you truly could be choosing? And if you would choose it, would create greater fun for you and riches too. And everything that doesn't allow that, are you willing to all let go of that? And if you say yes, I'm going to say right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, powads and beyonds. And that is the clearing statement we used a short while ago. We just got introduced to it. So right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock. Pot, pock is where we have destroyed certain possibilities. That is the point of destruction, P-O-D. From where? From the point of creation where you decided something is not possible a holiday is not possible i don't have the money for it i can't buy the clothes i don't have the energy to go out and buy it and like mamta just you know uh, put on the chat window she said she asked for clothes and her mother and her sister went and shopped and got her clothes today so so what if you didn't have a point of view about how it came to you and could allow greater possibilities to just show up for you. So this clearing statement clears up the energy. So whenever you ask a question, for example, all the anger holding you captive, are you willing to let go of that now? And when the other person says yes, and you say, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, powads, and beyonds, it actually starts clearing that anger energy. So whatever you're asking for, it starts clearing that. So when we say what possibilities are you refusing for greater money and riches to show up with ease, are you all willing to let go that now? And if you say yes, and I say right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, powads, and beyonds, it starts clearing that energy too. So are you willing to let go that is like a broomstick now. You can clean up and sweep up whatever you don't want to have in your life when you sweep up and clean up that energy it actually creates greater and we were not taught these two tool, tools in our childhood ideally we should have been taught hey you can give up anger hey you can give up sadness hey you can give up this and that no people said oh we have to be sad because we don't have money we have to be sad because so many of us to eat and less food we have to be sad because our country is not doing well we have to be sad for a zillion reasons what if you don't need reasons to be sad? What if you could choose reasons to be happy? And what if you didn't need even a reason to be happy? And what if you could choose happiness for no reason at all? So all that keeps you from being more happy today than any other day so far, are you all willing to let go that now? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys, powads, and beyonds. So this statement actually starts clearing the energies of where you're not willing to be happy. So it's an amazing tool. And instead of the word let go, we use the words, are you willing to destroy and uncreate it now? So it doesn't mean you will destroy, destroy. It's like a vacuum cleaner instead of using a broom to clean up that. So what else is possible? What else is possible is another great tool to use. That's a question to ask when you are stuck and without ideas. What else is possible here that I haven't even imagined possible? What else could be a contribution here? If you're starting a new business, ask the questions of the business as if it was a person. And you may not get the responses in your year. Ask, hey, what would you like to look like? What would you like to be like? Let me know in a way that I get it. And the thoughts can come to you from the business through somebody else or in as an idea in your head. <clears throat> a few uh, days ago, uh, I was watching the rain falling. It was so beautiful. And just that day on my phone, it said new Android version. And... I said, okay, install a new version. I allowed it. It was light for me. I just chose it and it got reinstalled. When I rebooted the phone, it said, hey, these are the new features that you're going to get. And one of the features was slow motion recording on the camera. 
I was like, what use would that be to me? But then anyway, okay, this, this, this. Okay, how did, I wonder how I could use this. I asked that question and I left it and I went through all the other features. After a few minutes, I was watching this rain falling and I started recording it. And I said, hey, this is allowing me to record in slow motion. And then I enabled that. And in a, in a few seconds, it started slowing down the rain being recorded. It's so awesome. You can see you can see the droplets coming. So the rain is just drizzling. The rain is just falling at a drizzle and at a fast pace. And in that same recording, the camera just slows it down. And now you can see droplets falling. It's such an amazing thing. I really enjoyed that so much. I think I put it up on Instagram. I'll put it up again. So have a look at that. Go click on my Instagram. Look for my name. And... Let's see if you like that. Post it over there on a comment. So much is possible with technology to add value to our lives. How can you take advantage of technology? Okay, so some people resist technology. They don't want to learn it. What if it's okay? Yes, it may not be easy for some people. So ask, how can I use this to my advantage? How can I use technology to my advantage and look at what else is possible. Some ideas could show up for you. You may not use technology yourself. Ask somebody else to use it for you, to contribute to you. Who can be a contribution to me to create greater with technology? Ask that question. Who can contribute to me to create greater for my business? Ask that question. When you ask that without a point of view, somebody else can show up who could make posters for you, who could do marketing for you or whatever. Sometimes a person is a contribution even by listening to you and your ideas. What if even that is a contribution for you? What if even the rain is a contribution? You're sitting near a window and you can see the rain. And what if nature is contributing so many ideas to you and the rain is a contribution too? What if you could receive from everything around you? Any other tools anybody else uses to create greater ease and joy in their life? Who does this belong to? Who does it belong to? Fantastic. That's a super tool too. Who does it belong to? So often we are so aware. Each one of you is so aware. You may be just picking up the thoughts of a zillion people around you and you're not even present to that. So when you feel tiredness, ask, who does this belong to? It may not even be yours. If it gets lighter, then it's not yours. Just let it go. If you have an ache and a pain that comes and goes sometimes, it's probably not yours. Ask who does it belong to and let it go to. Excessive anger, excessive fear. These may all be things that you're just picking up from other people. May not be yours at all. I remember when I started Access, which was about 10 years ago, there was this um, person who came for sessions and he said, I have road rage. And I was like, okay. And as we started the sessions, I asked him, I said, whose is, is this yours? He said, no. And he was so surprised when he said no, because he was just picking up the rage or the angers of everybody on the road. And he was, the, when he came to me, he was extremely upset. He says, Deepa, something is wrong with me. I thought I'm a nice person, but I'm not a nice person. The other day I got down from my car and actually pulled up this guy and shook him up. And I felt very bad after that. I felt I'm not a good person. I'm, not, I'm a very angry person. I don't want to be like this. This road rage disturbs me. And then in the session, he realized even that anger was not his. How cool is that? And when he gave that up, and he started becoming more present while driving, the anger just dissolved. He didn't have to be angry anymore because those thoughts were just his awareness that he was picking up from other people around him. What else? What else are you using? There's another amazing tool called the crazy phrase. I love that tool too. 
everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Say that like 10, 20, 30 times and you would be surprised. What you're very much stuck into that situation, you actually begin to come out of it. After some time, something just changes. You actually allow more creativity to come in, different ideas to flow in, or if nothing else, you may not be so stuck in that situation. If there is a child or a parent around you who's throwing a tantrum, please say that multiple times. If you are throwing a tantrum, please say it multiple times and you will get out of it too. And if you're throwing a tantrum, just acknowledge it because that will create greater for you, you know. What if it's not wrong to throw a tantrum and you are throwing one, just acknowledge it. What if it's okay? What if you don't have to classify everything as right or wrong or good or bad? You not judging a situation can also create greater for you. See, whenever you're very angry, see if you want to let go that anger, use these tools and say, okay, all that anger holding me captive, pod, 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 pod. P-O-D, P-O-C, pod, pock. And you will start letting go a lot of that stuff too. Hi, Auntie. So this happened in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually don't get angry. Um, I'm very, very controlled and I do extensive yoga to control my anger. Uh, but uh, this morning, I just almost lost it. So we just moved to a different house. Um, so uh, we had given, rented our previous house to uh, four girls from Symbiosis because they had come for internship to Hyderabad. Um, so this morning I went with my family to see the house um, because they had left a couple of days back. And uh, to my surprise or my horror, they had left everything in an untidy manner. Hmm. Uh, just just getting into the house uh, I had specifically told them to plant the water uh, plant uh, water the plants all my plants died I came inside uh, the house I was uh, shocked to see uh, boxes that they had ordered from Amazon thrown uh, I, I had seen like literally hair all over the house like I can imagine if it's in the bathroom but it was literally in the house it was very very untidy so I got very, very shocked to see how could somebody even, and the house was dusty. Mm. Like more than anything it was dusty. I'm like, how can you live in a house that is so dusty for two straight months? And uh, when I came in, uh, I literally stared at my father and I was like, uh, I don't know what to do right now. I might just call them and then scream at them. Uh, and then there's there was a mediator in between who got these girls to a house and uh, they got these girls because they also come from defense family so we were like okay maybe they're a little more disciplined than than other kids um so having said that i basically called the intermediary and started screaming <laughs> i didn't even scream because he was he was he's 76 years old you can't scream understand <laughs> But I said, you know, how can you live in a condition like this? I mean, how, why would you? I mean, we had cleaned together. Both of us had cleaned the house before they came in. And when I came back home, I literally was like, I might just call these girls and blast them. But then my dad was like, Kya hoga? only 300 rupees for cleaning. Let, let somebody else come clean the place and go why would you have to you know vent out your anger on something and for me I was thinking where did the anger come in from like is it me being judgmental that this is how I want I would have wanted the girls to be or is or it was a situation where you know it was coming from me uh, as a personal experience because I used to be untidy back then but then having said that I was thinking you know, it's not worth my time. It's not even worth my anger. I just don't know where this, which box or which tool this comes under. <laughs> but uh, having having spoken to my dad, he's just let, so he was like, just let it go. Like, why would you even want to waste your energy on somebody you wouldn't meet after, after a few years also? So 
I don't know. I think it's like this idealistic box that I had put in that this is how people should be versus this is how they ended up being. So. I get that too, totally. Uh, so the, you brought in so many awarenesses in that discussion. Okay. Uh, let me just talk about a few of them about what you said. One of the things you said is you were present to it that you were angry. That itself is an amazing awareness. Sometimes people just get angry and they're just shouting. But you were willing to see, hey, do I want to shout at this person? Well, should I call them up and shout or whatever? And you were being in the question as to what is the response you would like to choose. And that is so awesome. Okay, that's actually empowering yourself where you're willing to look at it in a detached manner, although you are also emotionally involved in it. And there was also an awareness while you were discussing that, okay, I am emotionally entangled in this. What do I want to do? So that's so, so amazing. So thank you for sharing all of that. And then you said, you know, like your father said, is it even worth your energy? That's an amazing question. You now included somebody who could give you that who could give you that input, is it really worth it? And then you also said, hey, I had an expectation it had to be this. So it was an unmatched expectation. That's why you were disappointed, upset and angry too. So, so many awarenesses. Wow, thank you so much for discussing all of that. So, you know, acknowledge where you are present to your own emotions. That is very empowering by itself. You may not have let go of the whole situation and more of that's all right too. You acknowledging that right now I'm entangled makes a difference. So just look at, you know, all the anger holding me captive about this, destroy and uncreate it all. Use the clearing statement a few times. Use the interesting point of view. They had this point of view, an interesting point of view. I had this point of view. And one more thing you said, which was so empowering. You said, I don't know whether it was because I used to be untidy too at that time. And that is so right. Because very often what we don't like in others is what we don't like in ourselves. So, you know, in just in those two, three minutes of what you were saying, they just, Vinny, it was so amazing. The number of awarenesses that you brought up and discussed, just fantastic. That's off to you. And keep building your awareness. <laughs> keep looking at different ways to let go. And what if you could choose greater ease more often? So, um, <laughs> and everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Say that 20, 30 times so that we're not as entangled as before with that situation. And what if that is one of the ways to create freedom? And, you know, once I heard Gary saying in one particular workshop, he said, Gary Douglas, he said, what if the purpose of life was to have fun? I was like, no, nah, that's not a good idea. That's not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is like my calling, which I'm still figuring out what it is, or the something significant. And I kept thinking about what he said for a few months. What if the purpose of life was to have fun? What if the purpose of life, how can it be? How can it be? I was rejecting that idea so much. It took me a few months to say, huh, supposing I had no point of view about it. What if the purpose of life was to have fun? That's true. If I'm not having fun, what's the point in having a webinar? If I'm not having fun, what's the point in eating this food? If I'm not having fun, what's the point in eat, watching this movie? If I'm not having fun, what's the point in doing this business? If I'm not having fun, what's the point in wearing these clothes? Whatever. What if you could have fun every minute all the time? And who said there is only one calling that can call you and you cannot allow yourself something else? Maybe that is calling your energy, taking your attention right now. You choose that business, that profession, that whatever. And then again, you choose. Maybe you change it, maybe you don't. Maybe you choose it again with different energies. What if you had choice all the time? Where did you decide you don't have choice? And that's also an amazing tool to create greater ease and joy in life. Your choice. Nobody, nobody, nobody can take that away from you. Don't ever think or say, I have no choice, but I have to do this. No. Even if it is one choice right now in front of you, ask what else is possible here? What else is possible here that I haven't even imagined possible? 
to this today was just the tip of the iceberg of some tools that you know I wanted to discuss with all of you and remind some of you and see those of you who are new to this see if you want to play with these tools keep playing this recording you can subscribe to my channel I will upload this on YouTube and keep playing with these tools and see if they interest you and play with different tools different times there is no such thing as this tool is the one that works for me. I'm going to forget the rest. If we make any one tool right for us, we are not willing to receive the other tools, by the way. So ask what else is possible here? Which tool can be a contribution to me? And right now, in those few seconds, you may not think of something. And what if that's all right too? Ask again. And the ideas will just come in. Or people will send it to you by email. Or you may hear it from somebody else. Whatever. Keep choosing fun. Thank you all for joining in. See you next Let Tuesday. Let us have a picture. Smile, please. Sure, definitely. I'll just one a minute.